open the portal to Halloween Town. Very official. Yeah. How are you guys doing? We're good. How are you? We're great. We're good. We were just talking about like our favorite uh, Disney Channel shows and movies, and Halloween Town was a resounding winner. So congratulations. Hey, awesome. Hey, yeah. Thank you. We like it too. <laughs> okay. um, you know that was the, what we were discussing. We were in this era on the Disney Channel where they were pumping out movies like a lot like the disney yeah. channel exclusives mm -hmm. and halloween town came in the part where like disney really hadn't touched halloween and so your guys's thing was so like new and original and i remember being so stoked to see halloween town one before you go and you battle cal you got to kill his dad so yes. um, that's why i'm getting my revenge i mean come on <laughs> so before daniel came on board of course you come on board and I'll never forget because my dad is such a huge Star Wars fan. The first thing he goes is he's like, oh, my God, they got Princess Leia's mom in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so how was it like for you to be cast as Marnie? Oh, my gosh, it was a dream come true. Um, and that actually, by the way, was Debbie's favorite way to introduce herself to fans. Uh, <laughs> she loved to walk up and she would be like, hello, I'm Princess Leia's mom. And everybody would get a kick out of it. Um, I, Marnie was a dream come true for me. I mean, it, it, it's not every day that you get to audition for a magical uh, teenage witch. And certainly then in the 90s, um, roles like that weren't as, as common. You know, the, definitely the supernatural genre has been, has been leaned into a lot more since then. So um, I auditioned a few times, and then I heard that uh, Debbie Reynolds was going to uh, play Aggie, and that just felt like... Um, I don't know, like an extra special treat on top of being able to play Marnie. And she was such a legend, um, but just the kindest, most grounded, um, just caring and, and funny. Just She was the most amazing human being. And she was much like Aggie in real life. That's what I like to tell people, because that's, it, she was, she just kind of trumped up that, um, that like feisty, funny side of her to, to play Aggie, but she was very much like that in real life. Right on, and with you and Disney coming on board to that, did they have any inkling at all that it was going to become like this franchise? Most filmmakers, when I get to interview them, will say no. Yeah, no, it, we didn't, we were just supposed to make one Halloween Town movie for Disney Channel, and I, I think it was like the second or third ever movie for Disney Channel. Like it back then Disney Channel wasn't in even in every household yet. So it was really cool when the first Halloween Town came out to watch it grow but to also watch the channel grow. Like I don't I, I remember after right after I did Quince, I think, um, they flew a bunch of us decommers to New York for like this big event in Times Square because Time Warner at the time had just added Disney Channel to their their lineup. So it was like me and Kristen Storms and um, the late great Lee Thompson Young and a lot of a lot of us decom actors got to go have a big celebration in New York. But that was like, that was when Quince came out. So that was probably like 2000 even. So like it, it took a few years for Disney Channel to really kind of just spread out a little bit. So, uh, but you fans have been so amazing over the years that because you guys you, you have just loved on it so much that we got to do sequels and that is due in large part to all of you guys because we were just supposed to do. One movie, and, and that was it. So, Daniel, for you, did you have, did you watch Halloween Town 1 by the time you're coming on board for Halloween Town 2? Were you a fan at all? Was it just another audition? No, I mean, honestly, it, I hadn't seen it, uh, the first one. It was another audition. I had three auditions that day. Um, to be honest, I didn't really prepare so much for the Halloween Town one because there was another audition for a TV show that I wanted more. <laughs> so I went into the audition for, and I was like, blah, 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 la, 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 la. And I left it, or I went to leave and the casting director goes, wait, wait, a second. You know, that, that's pretty good. I'm just going to give you a call back. And I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> that's one of the first lessons you learn when you don't care so much about it. A lot of times you do a better job. You're like, okay, I'm kind of relaxed. Yeah. Uh, so then went back in three more times. Uh, 
keep going up the the Disney Channel uh, building like <laughs> level. Like you get you get another audition, you go up a little bit higher. Then I ended up at the top. I think probably the fourth audition or fifth audition. And then, uh, yeah, did, booked the job and was like, oh, this is cool. I guess I'm going to be filming a movie. I had no idea it was going to change my life. Yeah, knowing Give me a wife out of it. <laughs> <laughs> knowing that it, both of you guys were going to make it, my wife and I, we sat down, we watched Halloween Town for like, uh, we always watch the first one as a tradition, and then we'll skip around the franchise. Sometimes we'll go one, two, and then there's other times that we'll do the high school one and then mm -hmm. one, whatever. But we watched number two for obvious reasons. And my wife just looks at me and she's like, damn, Cal is so angry. <laughs> and, he was. And yeah. like when the scene, the high school dance scene, when you're up there and I was like, damn, like he's like channeling some Star Wars level anger for real. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's what it felt like. It was like. Cal was getting revenge for his dad, what the Cromwell witches had done to it. I mean, in his mind, he was right, 100%. Yeah. And being a teen, you got a lot of angst anyway. I'm sure everybody remembers being a teen. Some of y'all are still teens. Yeah, there's a lot of angst, and that's okay. Well, that's what we're used to. We, we just got to work our way through it. One of the coolest things was that Halloween Town is, like, practical. Mm. So what was that like for you guys to be able to work with all the different creatures and characters especially for you in the first one when you're putting together, you know, Aggie's spell that you guys are trying to make for the scepter, you got you get to go mess with, like, every kind of ghost, every kind of werewolf, every kind of everything. Yeah, that part was especially fun for me as an actor, too, because, and especially, I mean, I was 13 when we did the first one, so um, I was also just a, a teenager who loved Halloween and was getting to... Um, experience Halloween Town much like the audience in the way that um, our, our production production designer was incredible and what they did to uh, the town of St. Helens for the first Halloween Town was incredible. Um, they, everything about like Halloween Town in the first movie, uh, the city hall and a lot of the shops um, are still intrinsic to uh, St. Helens, Oregon, where we filmed it. And so they did such a good job transforming this little town and it... I remember walking through it for the first time in the dead of summer when we were filming the first <laughs> Halloween Town. All of us were a little toasty. We we sold it well, but like I I did feel for some of the people dressed as creatures and stuff like that because we filmed in um, 90 degree weather in July in Oregon. So it was it was uh, you know we had to pretend it was fall. Um, but I it, as just as Kimberly moving through the movie like it 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 felt pardon the pun but it felt very magical to me like walking through the town and just so much of it came alive for me and uh, I I loved I love all the creatures in every movie. I I love how. Um, I don't know, I just, I, I love how there was such an amazing variety of all different, I mean, I have a special place in my heart for Natalie the Pink Troll in Halloween Town High. She was one of my favorite, because hmm. I just love trolls, but I just, I love the creativity. I love that we got to really um, fill, fill it with just creatures and, and all types of different characters and everything and show like how amazing it can be when everybody celebrates their uniqueness and, and, and comes together. That was really kind of the message of the Halloween Town High, for sure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. I I liked that we got to bring a bun like Halloween Town to the mortal world in Halloween Town High, and show that like no matter where you go to high school, whether it's the mortal world Halloween Town or what type of mortal or creature you are, that everybody goes to the same things. Everybody just wants to be seen and understood and and accepted and it's it's very uh common themes there you know no matter where you are so i yeah i love that we got to touch on that you know you mentioned an interesting fact that you were 13 when you got the role of marnie mm -hmm. so we literally watched you grow up yeah <laughs> how was that experience as a teenager both of you guys in halloween town too like how was that you know being a teen on set having to do you know teenage life school all that kind of stuff and you're and you're making a movie at the same time yeah that's a good question i i mean i i've been acting since i was a kid and um it, what people don't know is that most of the time on sets now there there are a ton of um child labor laws as there should be for working professional kids uh, but in when you go to work during the day, you spend a certain number of hours on set, but then you are also legally required to have a certain number of hours of schooling. 
So like when we did Halloween Town, I'd film for I think up to six hours a day, but then we had to do three hours of school yes. on top of it. So, which was never really the fun part, but you did it. Mm. Um, but it was, it's interesting as a, as a younger actor because a lot of the times you're spending time on set and you're working, but then when you're off and on a break, you're going and doing school too. So it's, it's, a, it's a busy day, but um, mm. it, was, it, it was so fun to be able to grow up with Marnie it was mm. such a unique experience. Um, like you said, I yeah, I was 13, and then I I grew up. All of the kids in the cast, like we grew up together, the cast, mm -hmm. and so we have we're all still bonded. I think because of that, and we all got along so well. But it was really awesome to yeah to get to grow up and and you know my relationship with Debbie kind of um, matured as well. Like she always treated all of us like peers, even when we were kids, and I I so admired that about her. But as I got older, she, you know, she took the kid gloves off a little bit more. Like the, when we filmed the first movie, you know, she was, she was great. And, and then as I got a little older, she, you know, she knew she could be, let her feisty side out around me. So I got to like enjoy that and, and, and enjoy like an adult relationship with oh, her Oh, who's well. your grandma figure? Only Debbie Reynolds. I know, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> How about for you? I know you were just in number two, but like, was there anything about being a, a teen actor in particular that stands out in particular? I, I mean, it probably would have been if I was a teen. I was actually, <laughs> was I was actually a little bit older. I just looked like a kid. I, I was 22 when I did it. No way! Yeah, wow. I just looked like I was 15 or 16 in it, uh, uh, which was funny because yeah, I mean, the director were... didn't know that I was 22 either until it was probably two weeks into filming, and we were talking about something. Mary Lambert was the director. I said, well, you know, I'm 22. And she's like, you're what? And I go, I'm 22. She goes, I thought you were 18. I'm like, well, I'm glad you thought I was 18. Because <laughs> if they were like, that's like a full-grown guy. We're not going to cast him. Uh, but I looked like I was 12 for a long time, which kind of helped. I would never have paid you for 22. I There's know. no way. Yeah. <laughs> um, was there a scene for you guys that stood out more? Your guys is like, battle with the vines or whatever you want to yeah. call them was pretty cool. I wish it was longer, honestly. That would have been... That was I, a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, that would have yeah. been fun to, to, yeah, to draw it out a little more, for sure, yeah. But Halloween Town 2 has such iconic Halloween Town stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, the timeline thing is cool. The whole Trappa Trappa, you know, apart yes. Trappa apart. thing uh -huh. is cool. The gray spell. Like, there's just a ton of stuff that when you think of Halloween Town... You may not even realize it until later on, but you're like, dang, all these things are Halloween Town too. But yeah. mm -hmm. do you guys in particular have a favorite scene that you did on Halloween Town 2 or the franchise in general? Um, let's see. There's, there were so many great days. Um, one of my favorite memories um, was from the first movie, actually. Um, we, Debbie and I filmed the broom flying scene on the very last day of filming. Hmm. So, and that was like the first day that I actually got one-on-one -on -one time with her because, you know, throughout the film, they're all group scenes and like Marnie and Aggie didn't really get to do things one-on-one -on -one until the later movie. So, um, the last day of filming the first Halloween Town, we did the broom flying scene in front of this big blue screen behind us and they basically set up a big stool and um, attached like the broom to it, but we kind of sat on it sideways and it would rock us side to side while the camera flew around us and you know made mm -hmm. us look like we were midair. Um, so that part was cool, but like it, being able to, we ended up basically just sitting up top on the broom for hours throughout the afternoon and it was mm -hmm. the last day of filming, it was just Debbie and I, and we just had the best day. Like we just got to hang out one on one, she told me stories, made sure my dad could come over and take some pictures of us. Like she just, she was great. And I think that was, that's always gonna like stay with me as, as such a, a special day. Uh, all the scenes were so so much fun to film. Uh, I, I remember one in particular, the, it was the short one where they don't know Cal's a bad guy yet and he opens the portal. Mm -hmm. Like, cause you're not supposed to be able to open the portal until like on Halloween, but Cal could do it. Yeah. So in the script it says, Cal does spell to open portal. That's it, Cal does a spell. And I'm like, great, okay, so they're gonna give me a spell. So I'm in my trailer and they come up to me and they're like, okay, we're gonna film, we're gonna film about five minutes. Are you ready, do you got your spell? And I'm like, yes I do. And the door shuts and I'm like, oh my gosh, I was supposed to come up with the spell? <laughs> like we're gonna film and now I, so 
luckily, like, it, I was racking my brain. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? It's got to sound like a spell. And I was in choir in high school, and we sang a song um, in German. It was called Fa la 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 la, musica, musica, fa la la la. And, and there's one part where it goes, Wie gesprügen, ja der Ton, ein Feist. And that's what I did <laughs> for the, Wie gesprügen, ja der Ton, ein Feist. Is, <laughs> and they're blowing the wind in my hair, and it looks really cool. And I'm like, oh, God, thank God that worked. <laughs> but it ended up working out. But I was terrified. Meanwhile, there's someone in your choir going, oh. oh my God, I know that. <laughs> yeah. I know that one. It's the choir spell. Yeah. It's not the portal spell anymore. Yeah. It's the choir spell. The choir spell. Do you guys, I know that the movies of this you know, era right now are really having like a renaissance. And we talked earlier about 90s con and how mm-hmm. all the, you know, I just turned 40. All the, all the movies that I grew up as a Halloween tradition, you know, either by myself or with my parents and friends, it didn't matter, like, this is what I wanted to watch, are all seemingly, like, coming back. And it's kind of cool yeah. to see. And not only are, are the movies becoming popular again, but all you guys are doing stuff like this for us to be able to come say hi and tell you that we still love these movies. And so do you guys get to see your castmates a lot? Or do you get to uh, keep in contact with them a lot? Yeah, thankfully, um, like you mentioned now, with traveling and, and doing different cons, we've definitely seen each other, I think, more than we Wouldn't. would have. Um, and social media has been cool in that we've been all been able to keep in touch over the years, like stay in each other's lives. But I, Judith Hogue and I have always been particularly close. She played my mom, Gwen, in the movies, and she's also April O'Neil in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Come on. <laughs> That's um, where I know her from. So she, yeah, she and I have always been uh, particularly close. She came to our wedding, and, um, and I just adore her. We do a lot of cons together now. And, uh, but, yeah, uh, Jay Paul and Emily and Phil Van Dyke and a lot of, uh, we're going to see Robin Thomas uh, Next year, we're doing a, a horror con in New Jersey, and he actually hasn't met, yeah, I met Robin yet. Thomas in person yet, who played Calabar in mm. the first one. So, uh, yeah, we're doing that in March, and they're actually going to get to meet in, in person, which I think is be cool. father and son. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we've get, gotten to see each other over the years, and it's especially because, like you said, the movies, um, y- you fans have loved on them over the years so much that they've just, they've, you guys gave him this whole life that we could have never have imagined. And we're so honored that you guys still watch it and make a part of your traditions for Halloween and everything. It's, it's really, really incredible. So it, it, you guys also, uh, are, we owe some of that gratitude to you guys because like we've, we've gotten to be able to, you know, keep in touch and, and become, you know, better friends over the years because, because of how much you guys have loved the movies. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have a Halloween Town wish as far as, in hindsight, you wish something in the movies were done differently? We talked about before you guys got here, like, it would have been cool to see Cal and Calavar come back for, like, a final, you know, versus Cromwell family battle, like, once and for all type of a thing. Um, So is there something in particular that didn't happen in the franchise that you wish did I mean that probably would have been my answer I think and that's most fans like that's what they ask us about all the time is like well Cal said he was coming back and it's like yeah that's what we thought too Um, but I yeah I I, I mean I I think there's still so much possibility even in that for um, for more stories and an, another movie and that kind of thing, people ask us all the time. Um, and I'm, we're totally down to do another one. And Disney knows that, but it's just, yeah. it's up to it's them. Up so to if you want to tell them, you'd watch it. But uh, at so, Disney Plus, yeah, <laughs> on social media. But yeah, there's, I mean, I yeah, there's there's so much. Um, there's still like yeah, so many different adventures we could go on and. Uh, and all kinds of things, but I yeah. The first, if somebody were to ask me like, what what's one thing you know that's still it, yeah, we got to see what yeah. where Cal went. I mean, Cal did him? he flew away in a huff at the end, a big ball of eh, he flies away. I'll be back, and they're like he'll be back, and we'll be waiting, and then he <laughs> never came back. I don't know. <laughs> all yeah. of a sudden, maybe he grew up. School. Yeah, 
Cal was like, I don't know, maybe just, that's fine. The crom, they're fine. Yeah. yeah. Cal had to go get a job. You know, he's maybe he's one of the knights. Like, who knows? There like, you go. Yeah. There you go. That would be a cool twist for sure. Yeah, one of our team members, you know, definitely wanted to hear you talk about because you, uh, Kimberly, are no stranger to the actual horror world. <laughs> <laughs> getting yeah. to do, you know, Rose Red, which I remember having nightmares over. Those oh, I'm sorry about statues. that. Statues. Um, <laughs> those statues were creepy. But then hearing that really what that was supposed to be, it's an interesting story, is that Stephen King got brought forth about doing like a project about the Winchester Mystery House. And then mm-hmm. he said, like, for whatever reason, it, you know, it was no on Winchester. But then King was going to write his own kind of Winchester-y thing, and it became Rose Red. And, I mean, that tracks, because the house is very alive and mystical. Yeah. But your character in particular, my wife and I are both uh, special ed teachers. And so, you know, there's definitely, you could look at your character and be like, uh, she's autistic. Mm-hmm. But the other day, talking about the two of you guys, I was like, well, really, if you read the way that King writes the characters, some of the characters in Doctor Sleep with The Shining, she almost looks like she has The Shining. And so I'm curious, like, when it came to playing your role, were you given, like, by the way, she has autism, can you kind of do this? Or, like, any kind of, like, direction as to... Yeah, yeah. I um, I went and auditioned for it, and she was described, the character breakdown was an autistic, telekinetic psychic who's brought in with the other psychics to sort of wake up the house. So, yeah, that was a big okay. aspect of um, of the character. And, yeah, I, I it was so, just so unique to get to play such a special character and, um, and, and get to, you know, make all these powerful powerful things happen with my mind. It was so cool. Uh, Stephen King is one of the nicest human beings I've ever met. Such a funny, smart guy. Um, and uh, thanked me for doing the movie. And I was like, no, sir. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought it was so cool. Like I, That was my first foray into Stephen King. I hadn't seen him a, a lot of the stuff he had done up until that point. And I thought it was so cool that he had written an original story um, as as a movie first, as a movie series versus like writing a book and then adapting it. So I, he wrote the Diary of Ellen Rimbauer after that. But it was so, yeah. I thought I felt it was like such a special experience having him come visit said a couple of times. The cast was so amazing. I still keep in touch with a lot of them. And um, yeah, it's a it's a really fun, unique little mini, mini series. I uh, saw on your social media for the, my last question. I noticed that you were doing panel moderation of your own. Yeah, yeah, I've been doing that. So I was curious, because we started, how I got to Sinister was we had started like a podcasting channel. So I was interviewing people on the podcast that brought me here. Like, Mm -hmm. do you, what is it about interviewing people for you? Do you just like doing panel moderation? Or do you guys ever like, I mean, you guys could do a whole Wingtown podcast, 100%, but (laughs) like, how is that? Is that just a hobby or like? Uh, well, I've, I've always enjoyed hosting and doing improv. So I've kind of dabbled in that over the years of my career in different different forms. I, I studied um, at, at Second City and Upright Citizens Brigade, two uh, improv schools in L.A. and New York, and um, was performing a lot around L.A. And I've, I've done some hosting at different different types of events and then yeah I got to do it more recently with with 90s con moderating their stuff and it's it's been really fun that that one in particular 90s con is very is even more exciting for me because I grew up on TGIF and Full House and Step by Step and Family Matters and all that so just getting to you know I I moderated a panel with Jaleel White a few months Mm. ago and like that for me was just pinching myself (laughs) the whole time you know so it's I, I get to live out like my fangirlness too when I when I host. So that's you know it's a win win. <laughs> right on. As I do have one more question: Was Marnie plus Cal a thing at Halloween Town too, or was that a later on connection? Oh, How that was you, much, much later. later. Yeah, that was probably over a decade, maybe oh, a was. decade later. Yeah. We were, we were friends and friendly when we filmed and everything, and we kept in touch a little bit afterwards. But you know, as you do with coworkers or whatever, we kind of lost touch. 
And what was it, 10 years later, maybe even more, yeah. she got a hold of me on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook, of all things, and said, hey, we haven't talked in a while. Um, I was thinking about doing some sketches. Would you want to do some sketches? And I was like, yeah, we haven't talked in a while, so let's meet for a drink. It's been a long time. Yeah. So I'm at the bar, and I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting. And then Kimberly comes walking in, and I'm like, oh, hey. <laughs> how, how you doing? Uh, I guess we're older now. Uh, all right. And here we are. <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. married yeah. not too long ago, yeah? Six yeah, months April. ago today. Wow, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Thank, you. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I can say I definitely hope that we see the two of you on any screen again, man. Disney, hashtag Disney Plus is right. <laughs> but do, we, do we have any questions for you guys? In the back. Um, If I could play any other character in Halloween Town besides Marnie, who would I choose? Mm, I have mentioned Natalie the Pink Troll. Yeah. I do love Natalie the Pink Troll. Um, I mean, my my goodness, I I yeah, I think uh, it's so funny. I just want to gravitate towards some kind of like fun makeup like creature. Like that's where I, that's where my brain goes. So yeah, I'll go with Natalie the Pink Troll then. Yeah. <laughs> um, I. Let me, let's say Luke, like the, the troll, or he was a goblin. He was a, yeah, what he was, was Luke? Goblin, yeah. He was a goblin. Yeah. yeah. His character is really cool, and he was, you know, he, he just wanted to help everything and just, you know, Marnie. Yeah. You know, so that was fun. They were always good friends. I liked that, that dynamic between them. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> we have one over here, Jim. Jim. Yeah. Let me move you over here. Okay. I'm going to stand up. Get away from that speaker yeah. a little bit. Um, if you could end up with Luke, would you have in the first movie for the second one? Like if you and Luke, Luke got together. I mean, I guess I, I could see why that was, I could see why the fans liked them together. I, I don't know, I, I feel like Marnie always saw him as a good friend. I think they would they were meant to be like BFFs in Halloween Town because he was there for her. Han um, and Chewie. Say that again? Han and Chewie. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So I, yeah, I don't, I, I kind of like that, that like that wasn't the automatic like path for Marnie and Luke, you know, like that they didn't just automatically become that, that they were, they were always good friends. <laughs> yes. Debbie Reynolds uh, was just incredible. Um, she loved to, she wanted everybody to shine as brightly as they could around her. She wanted to lift everybody up. She tried to move ladders for the crew when something needed to be moved. And they were like, no, 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 Ms. Reynolds, don't, we got that, we got that. Um, but she, she was the best. Uh, she just truly loved performing and taught me at a young age uh, what a gift it was to be able to make people happy in that way. And she never wanted to stop and, and just, and, and shared so many stories from her past, um, just uh, hoping to impart wisdom anywhere she could or just make us laugh. Uh, yeah, she truly was such a, a fantastic lady. Oh, she was, she was great. Like, she was a movie star that didn't act like a movie star. Like, it, she was such a nice lady, but it emanated off of her. You're like, wow, she's special. Just for, just for like, walking around. But she had so much energy and passion for it. I know the, one of the last scenes we did was the big party scene at the end of Halloween Town 2, where everybody's there, and Cal's up in the rafters and turns everybody. Um, so we were filming for a while, because there were a lot of different shots. And it was getting to be probably 1 o'clock in the morning or whatever. We'd been filming for a long time, and there was 50 extras, maybe even more. Yeah. Everybody was tired. Everybody was tired and the energy got low. And Debbie saw that and she was like, hmm. So she goes out in the middle of everybody and she starts singing and dancing and cracking jokes and asking people questions. And then all of a sudden everybody had a bunch of energy and they were like, okay, rolling, let's go. So she could say, she was 68 years old at the time. And she had more energy than everybody else at one o'clock in the morning, just going out there. It was, it was the coolest thing. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Uh, as a famous teenage witch and a famous wizard, who are your favorite witches or wizards? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I I grew up with Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and I've I've um, gotten to know Melissa Joan Hart a little bit over the years, and and gotten to to uh, moderate some panels with the cast, and they're all such great people and good friends, and. 
she, I feel like she kind of paved the way in the 90s for a lot of different, um, a lot of different like entertainment we have now. She, she broke the fourth wall and talked to the camera and Clarissa explains it all, you know, which like was so different then. And, and I remember watching TGIF when I was young and like being like, oh my gosh, like to be in high school and to have powers, like so cool. So yeah, she, that, she's probably my favorite. Um, well, I was a child of the 80s, so I had watched Teen Witch, which is funny because Robin Lively's here. So I had watched it a bunch at my grandparents' house because they had cable and we didn't. So whenever I was over there, I got to go in my grandpa and grandma's room and just watch cable. I don't even remember how many times I watched Teen Witch and Top This and Top That and the guys dance. <laughs> like, and so like to, to see her here, I'm like, that's just the coolest thing ever. Like, that's, that's Teen Witch. Right? Like, so for me, man, I'll say Robin. Anybody else have a question? What was your favorite part out of the whole series to film? Oh boy, it's kind of hard to narrow it. There's, there's lots of good parts. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think, because besides like, I'm trying to think of some of the other special effects we did. Um, the broom flying was always fun because again, that was something that like, when are you gonna get to be able to pretend to do that? It was not, uh, it was not a common thing. Um, but I, a lot of the scenes, I remember filming the very beginning of Halloween Town, um, the first movie, and that we actually got to film all the beginning scenes in our house um, at the beginning of the movie. And most of the times when you film a movie, you don't film them in the scenes in sequential order. You're all over the place. But we actually got to, our first couple of days of filming were those first beginning scenes in the movie. So that was, that was a really special time because we all were, a, a lot of that, like getting to know each other and the surprise of, of Aggie coming to visit us was um, was all of us like you know finding our groove and that was we had a lot of we had a lot of fun like in that house it was in Oregon for the first uh, few days like it was like oh here we go like we're finally getting to do this yeah I, I like I said all of the scenes were great for me but a, a couple of them when a cow's up in the rafters at the end party scene where he's got the big book and everything I was actually up in the rafters. Like we filmed in a uh, like an airplane hangar or something, mm -hmm. big one, and they had rafters uh, 25 feet up, let's say 25, 30 feet, and they had me up in the rafters and they had me tied to a rafter so I couldn't fall. And they're like, and by the way, here's your book, big old huge book. So I'm standing <laughs> on a rafter, 25 feet in the air with the big book doing the spell. Uh, and then another part of that scene is where Cal flies down onto the stage. They had rigged me up with a rope and everything, and there was a guy holding the rope on the <laughs> other end, and I'm just like hanging up in the air, and they're like, action, and I just, boom. <laughs> the first take didn't go as well. It slipped out of the guy's hands or something, so I just basically fell, and luckily I landed on my feet, and I was, I was, like, I was like way up there, and they're like, zip, and I was like, ah, bam, ah, and they didn't say cut, so I was like, Zap! Zap! <laughs> Trying to keep going because nobody said cut. But, uh, but luckily, I landed on my feet and everything was good. Um, so that, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, we got time for a couple more questions if anybody has one. This one here, too. What was it like to f a film with Steve Martin and Queen Latifah? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, I worked with, uh, with Steve Martin and Queen Latifah in a movie called Bringing Down the House. Um, and that was another, my goodness, another pinch me moment. Uh, when I found out I got that movie, I ran around the backyard a few times because I was so excited. I've been such a fan of Steve Martin's for so long. He's such a gifted, funny man and such a kind man. Um, I just was so honored to get to play his and, and Gene Smart's daughter. It, that cast was so packed with star power. I didn't know what that set was gonna be like, but to everybody's credit, they were all so down to earth and fun that we just had a good time making a funny movie. I, I was so excited that I got to even just share airspace with Betty White because she was another, I mean, I grew up on Golden Girls and like she, talk about another legendary, um, kind, amazing woman. She was, just the sweetest and um yeah it just it, it was a great set everybody had a good time and i'm i'm so so grateful i i still look at that sometimes i look at a picture of of steve and i or something and i can't believe that's that's me it was just such a yeah such a dream job one more over here Jim. 
Um, if you could do another Halloween Town, do you think Marnie would have like her kids go to school, or do you think she'd be more of like a teacher? I think, I, I yeah, I think either one. I mean, I could I could see her like you know teaching the another generation of witches. I think she could also like be running for mayor or be mayor of Halloween Town in some way, because <laughs> yeah. I think you know she was always like wanting to be in that position of like, okay, what can we do now? Like, let's, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I just I loved that about her. I loved her determination, her imagination, and her willingness to take risks. So yeah, I think she would be, I think she would be doing something like that in, in Halloween Town. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Anybody else have a question? A couple hands back down there. there. What was your favorite scene to do in Rose Red? Ooh, I don't think I've ever been asked that before. Yay. Um, <laughs> gosh. Um, I loved a lot of the, unfortunately it's not seen much in the scene, but the, uh, there's a big scene when we're in the house and um, it, a lot of us are dancing. Um, the, and, and Steve, uh, he has a cameo as the pizza delivery guy. I think it's that same scene. So we actually, that was supposed to be like a big swing dancing number for us. We had um, taken swing dancing lessons for weeks with the, these teachers that they brought in and we were basically, we. I think, if I remember correctly, is it somebody puts on a summer place or is put some, puts on a song? And so we we break out into this choreographed swing. And I mean, we Matt Kiesler and I, he we had gotten up to a point where he was flipping me and we were doing all this stuff. And we were supposed to levitate in the middle of it. And so it now the scene kind of plays. It, they cut part of it out so you don't get to see as much of the dance. But that was really cool. Like I, I actually learned swing dancing and got to, you know, just do something completely that I never would have gotten to otherwise. And I still have such great memories of, of Melanie Linsky and I and, and dancing class and just, you know, it was such a, such a cool thing to do. So that's, that's the first one that pops into my head for sure. Thank you. We got time for one more question. What was one of the funniest moments that you had on set of Halloween Town? Um, there were a lot of them. I'm trying to think. Um, I remember there was, there was one day when we were filming the first one, uh, when all the kids, when we got to Aggie's house. And um, Debbie that day, for some reason, <laughs> the words Cromwell clan kept tripping her, tripping her up. So she kept saying, oh, well, you know, when the entire Cromwell clowns are going to get together. <laughs> and we just start giggling. So that happened a couple of times. And we just thought that was the, you know, the funniest thing. Um, that, that sticks out to me. The, when you did your um, blockhead uh, oh, yeah. scene, that was, that was funny. Because we, we shot that in, on two different days. Because um, when we were in Halloween Town, uh, you were off camera reading yeah. the lines and the camera was on Debbie and I and we were doing our part, you know, looking up at the air, um, acting to, to Daniel in the block. And then on a different day, we were in the studio and we did his coverage, as they call it, and um, they had to put the whole, like, styrofoam wall on his head. You should probably finish the rest <laughs> of that oh, story. Oh, yeah, they, they had to take a plaster mold of my face first. So they smeared plaster all over, and I had straws up my nose. And I'm like, okay, don't freak out, don't freak out, don't freak out. Don't oh. oh, yeah. I'm like, don't freak out, don't freak out, because it's very claustrophobic. It takes like an hour, and then they peel it off, and then they put the, uh, the rubber mold stuff in there, and so it looks like my face. And then they had to glue it onto my face, and it was a block about, block about this big that looked like the block and everything. Uh, so it took them, I don't know, an hour and a half, two hours to glue onto my face. And then they attached that to like this black backboard type of thing to where I couldn't move. So then I'm like, oh, you Cromwell witches, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <laughs> and so that was funny. And after we were finally done filming the scene, uh, a lot of the crew came by and they graffitied all over my face because it's like a block wall. 
So we have a picture of me sharpies. with the block wall with graffiti all over it. He and posted everything. it recently on his Instagram. Actually, yeah. there's a picture of him in the wall, stand, you know, with the block on his face. And it, yeah, I'm yeah, so, so that, glad we grabbed that shot because there's different Sharpie markers all over it with like stuff written. I think on the top I wrote KJB was here. Yeah. Post no bills. I think one yeah, of them says Daniel's totally, a loser. Yeah, we drew <laughs> stuff all over it. It was so fun. Yeah, it was so we fun. still have that picture. It's such an iconic scene because you're this giant block, as you're saying, the like meanest things to Marnie. I wanted you to show me the room because I wanted you to feel something for me. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, that cuts deep. But you're yeah. this, <laughs> but you're this giant block. Like it's kind of hard to be afraid. Yeah, of you. yeah it's kind of hard to take him seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, when I had to film the the lines fast because they had to slow it down, right. so my yeah. voice got low. So then I'm like, I'm gonna learn a crumb, witches. So that was fun. Uh, that was, that was, and I love how your face just like, whoop, like it ju the way they just made your like the, your face just like pop back into the block when you're like, okay, see ya, and you just yeah. whoop, like. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. like a little drop effect or something. Yeah, it was really rebound. cool. I just saw that again recently, and I was like, oh, that's well, that's pretty cool. Awesome. <laughs> Well, man, it's moments like that and dozens more that we love the Halloween Town franchise. Fingers and toes crossed that we do get. I mean, we got Hocus Pocus so many years later. Exactly. So hopefully we can get a revisit to Halloween Town at some point. Like, absolutely. I know everybody in the room would be on board for that. That's something so, I'd like to see. Yeah. <laughs> So, but until then, we definitely thank you guys for coming. Hopefully we get you back at some point. But everybody, give it up for <laughs> Kimberly J. Brown and Daniel Cooks. Thank Marty, you, guys. Thanks, thanks for, for coming. coming out. Yeah, thanks for your questions. This has been fun. Guys, can I get a picture with you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah.